Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dungeon Dive. Daniel here. All right, I'm here with just going to be a hopefully somewhat quick video on the third Hexplorant game, The Sands of Shrex. So as a lot of you know, I have grown to love Hexplorant Volume 2, The Forest of Adramon a lot. I think that game is a fantastic hex crawl adventure game. Just wonderfully made, full of adventure, full of excitement. It builds an interesting story. It, um, it's, it's exciting. It's unique. There's a lot of love for me to find in, in Forest of Adramon. I'm having a somewhat more difficult time getting into the Sands of Shurax. I have a whole list of questions out to the designers. I was hoping to get some answers sooner rather than later because this game has actually been set up on my table for almost two weeks now and I've hardly made any progress into really getting some final thoughts together because there's a lot, I have a lot of questions about the game, the design, and some questions about how it is played and I'm not quite sure what to do with this game. Um, I need to get it off the table so I can get something else on because that is like a unique problem of a YouTube channel like mine where I only have one table and a small room to keep one game set up. Um, this has been like hogging the table for two weeks and haven't been able to do other things. And it's kind of just been haunting me. So I just wanted to get a video out with some, just some thoughts on the game. And this is not a review because I haven't played enough of the game to give it a proper review. So I'm not passing judgment on this game. I'm going to just kind of talk about some of the things that this game presents. If they sound interesting to you, this may be a game that you want to look when it hits retail. And their games always do hit retail. So um, hopefully I can come back with some good answers and really dive into the game and give it a really good uh, few playthroughs and come to some good final thoughts. But in this game, you are going to be traveling around this desert land. Now, one thing that the guys over at, guys and gals over at uh, the Explorit company have done is they have created some wonderful map tiles. And I absolutely love the look of this map. It is super interesting. So many cool things to look at and see and discover on each of the map tiles. Um, really good job. They have really um, improved their art on their, as far as their maps go. So super well done. But in this game, unlike the other Explorer games, you are actually creating two separate land masses to explore. One is in the center of your table. And that is going to be your hot tiles, these represent the wasteland and you will have to be exploring the wasteland, looking for certain things, certain bosses, certain events will only happen in the wasteland. And so while you are out here, you are far away from the city states, from civilization in this game. And sometimes you will have to go to these caravansaries uh, these little spots where the caravans meet up and you will have to hire a caravan and then that caravan can take you to one of the four quadrants where the city-states are located into civilization where you can buy stuff, where you can uh, do certain things at each of the cities to help progress their win condition, maybe to get some... Um, uh, some reputation to get more gold, to visit certain NPCs, that kind of thing. Um, you can also, at certain points in the game, you can go to an arena where you can uh, participate in a number of little mini games to progress your fame and your fortune. You can go to a gambling hall where you can compete in four or five little gambling mini games to uh, raise your gold level. Uh, you can, each of the cities has its own placard where they're going to tell you about certain 
bespoke things you can do in each city during the event phase. Each city has its own listing of uh, unique items that you can buy, its own listing of unique ways that you can be employed by the city to earn gold. Each city has its own win condition that you can choose to uh, complete at any time and you only need to complete one win condition to win the game. That's one of the things I'm not super into because I'm never quite sure when to pull the trigger on one and go after one or another and that's it's causing some some like analysis paralysis for me it's it's i like in this game as you can see there is a ton to it i mean we haven't even gone over the regular circumstance deck that is going to be filled up with all of your combat and non-combat combat encounters which are, there are a ton of them you also have your um when you hire a caravan you have a caravan master and this caravan master is going to have its own reputation that if you help him you will advance towards his reputation his or her reputation if you work against them you will go in the opposite direction each one of them is going to have certain uh, rewards that they will reward to the players if you help them get to where they're going to go. Each one is going to have a home city where they can go back to, you can hire them again. While you are on the caravan, you're going to be going through a bunch of caravan events, which, which is a whole nother deck of combat and non-combat encounters. Each city has its own deck of missions that will come out you at the beginning of the game you turn one over and then if you solve that one then you go to the next one and there are i think two or three of the hexplorate living cards in these decks where you can uh, scan the card and go on the website to have kind of like a ongoing adventure you can explore the quadrants and make them bigger by drawing new tiles to come out at certain spots. You can go into these irradiated zones and you can get mutated and each of the mutations is different and it adds different um, elements to your character. There are a number of different mutations for the enemies to get that you can roll randomly to make them more challenging. On top of that, there are, I believe, nine different bosses just in the base game, not including the additional bosses that are in the expansion. Um, the expansion adds a whole dungeon crawl mini game <laughs> on top of all of this. Um, so on top of like trying to figure out which win scenario you're going towards, you are also having to deal with this bugger here, this giant worm that is going to be coming up onto the map and destroying spaces, uh, throwing huge monkey wrenches into your plans. Uh, yeah, there is just, it is an overwhelming experience and that is both good and bad. Um, I kind of feel like a kid, a young kid at Disneyland with this game, or maybe at a super big loud arcade where I'm just kind of like staring at everything, like not knowing, <laughs> not knowing which machine to put my quarter into first, uh, not knowing which ride to go on first, you know. Um, and unfortunately, that feeling of that good that feeling that was an initially a good feeling of being overwhelmed by all kinds of stuff has unfortunately turned into a feeling of exhaustion and I just I can't get into the flow of the game because there is so much I also unfortunately have a pretty large number of questions about some rules and some design issues out to the developers like I said and so I can't really, I don't feel like I can really pass judgment on this game until I get some answers from them and think about it some more. Um, but I think to a certain group of people, a certain type of gamer, 
this game is really going to to hit the right spot because um, people who like big involved games that take up a lot of room that take up a lot of time that you can really lose yourself in for days and days and days there is a lot to like about this game I think unfortunately like I was saying with you know with a YouTube channel like mine not having a lot of space to keep multiple games set up I kind of have to play a game and then move on to something else and then I can come back to a game but it is important to have new things out on the channel so I just I can't keep this game set up for as long as I really need right now to get into that flow to learn it in the way that I need to learn it because there are so many things going on that it is just it is an overwhelming and somewhat exhaustive experience that has not it just hasn't quite clicked with me yet we haven't even talked about the characters so you have all kinds of different you know all kinds of different classes character classes you have all kinds of different uh races that you can be if you're gonna if you have the expansion you can add in the traits i mean there is just yeah this is a huge 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 game and i am hoping fingers crossed that every that you know most people really love it because i think a lot of heart a lot of soul was poured into this game i just i don't know if it's for me you know um i don't know if i'm going to be able to get into it i don't like how there are four different win conditions i liked in force of adramon how there was one win condition to 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 you know destroy the city where adramon was um camped in but you had a lot of different ways you know that was your goal and then you could kind of just go out and have your adventure um, this game I always feel like there's those four different win conditions are kind of like always constantly pulling me in different directions and I'm never just quite sure what I'm supposed to be doing at any given moment it is it's um, it's I'm not Usually I'm not prone to analysis paralysis, but in this game, there are so many options at any given moment that I just, I don't know <laughs> what to do when I'm given the choice. Um, but yeah, so I think that's it. That's just a kind of a weird little video. I just, I wanted to get something out there to you guys. I wanted to explain all of the things that are going on in this game. And if this kind of, this amount of information and mechanisms and components and systems on systems on systems and layers and options if that is something that you are looking for and you did not get sands of shurax i really think you should get the game because um i have not seen a game or too many games that have this much going on on the table at any given time uh, if you are not into things like this where just you have to constantly be like keeping track of uh, like bookkeeping and you are more like a manager of a party where you have to constantly be juggling like three or four or five different options wondering what to do you know heading out in one direction having your destination be destroyed and then you have to completely change up your direction to take a, another option you know if that kind of thing doesn't interest you then you may want to avoid sands of shurex but uh yeah so that is my weird video on the sands of shurex like i gotta say I, I mean i really wish i could just say that i played this game and loved it as much as force of adramon loved all the changes loved all the things they added to it loved all of the ways they expanded this game into this huge huge epic adventure but right now i just i, I just i can't say that and i'm hoping i can get there because i really want to love it if you guys are like really really loving it let me know once i get my answers to my questions from the uh designers 
I'm hoping that I'm gonna get like have this game set up again and just have an amazing time getting completely lost in this world. Maybe this is a game that I should focus on the next time I have a week off for vacation because it seems like that kind of game. It seems like a game that you just want to pour hours and hours into to where you can get into that flow to where you have to stop thinking about the games uh, as a set of rules and, and, as, and a set of mechanisms and just start thinking about the game in terms of the adventure of the experience that it is offering. So, all right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this weird video on Sands of Shurax and we will talk to you later. Bye-bye.